You ready, Scott? Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We've been talking about um, this uh, reality that the thing that pleases God is that which has passed through death. It's not just that which has died, but if it dies with the right nature in the right spirit, it passes through death. You get it? So I preach, I, I preach death because that's the avenue for life, the life of the lamb within his body. But I'm really seeking Christ to be established as our life instead of just death. That's the difference. That's my difference. And I, uh, to my knowledge, I've always made that clear, but maybe I haven't. Um, I think I'll read a little bit this time. <clears throat> um, in the Old Testament, the value, so this is, this is important, because I'm going to talk to you about <clears throat> what is what the lamb is without and what it is within. I'm going to talk to you about what is valuable about the lamb and what is what qualifies it for death. Okay. So these are these are important distinctions. They are important distinctions. So listen carefully. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the Old Testament, the value of the sacrifice rested with the quality of the lamb chosen for death. Okay, the value of it, but it had to be without spot or blemish, and we'll explain that. While it is true that the sacrifice was not valued and had no acceptance if the lamb before the sacrifice did not have certain qualities, yet, okay, before it dies, mm -hmm. it has to have certain qualities. It has to be without spot, splot or blemish. Splot or blemish. <laughs> or, you know, I know I, a friend of mine had a dog named Spot, and I know he couldn't go to the cross because he was with Spot. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> um, so, so it did have to have certain qualities, right? Okay, but those qualities were not... The, f the main thing that God was looking for, and they in themselves would be like a living lamb out on the field instead of one on the altar. It would be like solid incense that has special qualities in it, but it is never burned up. It would be like Jesus of Nazareth simply coming and healing and blessing and then going away, not through death. <clears throat> and these are... You know, for some people, these things that we're saying here are earth-shattering. They are, what? Never heard anything like this, including some of your faces, I can tell them. Um, yet, being innocent and without spot only qualified him for the possibility of entering death. That's good, yeah. That's good, you have to see that. It was a qualification, but it wasn't proof that it would die because something else had to be on the inside without spot, without blemish, without surface things. You had to, that would qualify you for death, but only something that was within, a nature within, would bring you to the altar willingly. Okay? So that's what I'm trying to say here. Yet, being innocent and without spot only qualified him for the possibility of entering death. The qualifying factor was that it be without something. Without something. You, you have to be without this. Okay. <clears throat> In itself, these qualities were not the main thing that brought God glory but required, they are required, if something was to be, con uh, be uh, considered for sacrifice. Being innocent and without spot only, let's see, being innocent and without spot only qualified him for death, but the acceptance and entrance into that death was purely based 
upon a selfless heart. We're, we're talking about Jesus, but we're talking not just about Jesus with good qualities as he walked this earth. We're talking about heart qualities that made him open to going to the cross for that which didn't deserve anything. I mean, we, you know, never mind. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Um, that aspect was not what it was devoid of, but what it had. It's not devoid of spots and blemishes. It has something. Um, the, uh, what it had, not only its surface spots or blemishes on the external, but innately in its nature. That's what was the thing that was precious. But not just talking about an altar, going to an altar. Amen? Yes. Not just talking about it, not just knowing about it, just, you know, a lamb could walk by an altar and go, oh, you want to hear my latest sermon on things I got from God on that? And go, oh, you are the deepest, most spiritual lamb in the flock. You're so precious. And God's going, mm. and, and when we look at you, we see that you're without spot or blemish. You're, you're what God wants. Mm. <laughs> not till you go to that altar, and not till that altar is at work in you, not till that spirit has captured you, Amen. you know? To image that to our minds, God chose a lamb. And I don't know if the, that phrase is to image that, but that's, um, <clears throat> I wanted to write it from, the, as best as I could from the Lord, to image that, the, the difference of having qualities that are amiable, Solid incense that has stacti and onyx, uh, and I can't remember, I, there are weird words anyway. There's one other, what is it? Frankincense and uh, something gumum, <laughs> pergamum, but it wasn't pergamum. <laughs> it was, um, <clears throat> anyway. Algum, I don't remember. Anyway, guess what? We'll, we'll get to that eventually someday. Years, many years from now. It's here. It's in my notes. I could flip down there, but what's the point? Um, but, the, but my point of saying that right now is that these were, were ingredients that were specially chosen of God and the special mix that came together, and they've never figured out what those ingredients are in real life. They might have had different names back now compared to them. The point being nobody can duplicate it. Okay, and there's good stuff all behind that. <clears throat> but those ingredients in themselves, they only qualify you to be burned up. They, they are not the thing. It's the heart that will, will receive and accept that altar of incense. Okay? <clears throat> um, all right. So uh, I want to talk about... Um, the high priest in relationship to what we're saying here. Because I think that there's another sort of vague area in people's minds where we do not do honor to Jesus as the high priest because we don't see much difference between him and other priests other than he was the son of God and therefore he's better, you know. Um, <clears throat> so... I'll just read some of that too. The same was true concerning Jesus as high priest, who was chosen by God as high priest. No man taketh this to himself. God's looking for something innate. 
that will not have to be coerced and forced and manipulated or talked into or it will be drawn out that and see that's Christ within us may Christ be drawn out of us may the lamb be drawn out of his body um Though the duties necessitated being carried out in a perfect order. So here's what we're talking about. We're, we're doing a similar thing we just did in relationship to the sacrifice, but we're talking about the high priest. <clears throat> All right. So there were two things that a priest would, would have to do. Number one, they would have to qualify to even be a priest. Okay? Right? They, and there were... Many of those things were, again, just like a lamb. They were outward things. You can't have this. You can't have that. You, you can't be ugly. You can't, you know, stuff. <clears throat> well, maybe, maybe you could. I don't know. But there, was, there were those things, and there were also these things that you had to carry out the office in perfect order. Okay? And then the other thing was that you had to sacrifice. So that's more than two things. You had to sacrifice. When we're talking about Jesus as the high priest, we're talking about the only priest, the only high priest, who didn't kill something else for them. The high priest would kill a bullock for himself on the Day of Atonement, and then kill a lamb and send off a scapegoat for everybody else. But it was always, all the priests that came before killed something else for their benefit, for their good. Okay? Um, But Jesus was the only one who himself became the sacrifice. The only one. And that's why he was the only true high priest that ever was. And everything else was a shadow. Okay? They, they were a shadow for one primary reason. They weren't him. And by not being him, they would never give themselves. Now, this goes all the way back to the foundation of, the, of sacrifices and priests and all this. And this, this um, th- we say, okay, well, God set it up, you know, um, in the wilderness there when he gave all the instructions on the, the tabernacle and the priesthood and all that. God set it up that way. God set it up that way because nobody had a nature to give themselves unto death for the nation. Right? Nobody. It's, that's, not, that's not possible. Not only that, God knows what's in every man. Right? God knows what we are. God knows, you know, that man at his best is altogether vanity. Um, David said, I was created in iniquity and da 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 well, whatever. You, you know it. <clears throat> uh, knowing, in other words, our own frame, that we are but dust. Okay. Nobody ever thought differently. Probably no other high priest that ever came along said, you know, we really should be giving ourselves. They said, this is the order, it's a great order, everything else gets to die. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Everything else gets to, so this is, this is good, this is God. Because <laughs> I don't have to die. <laughs> you know. And um, so nobody questioned it. And so from all the years that, that they offered, nobody questioned it. For all the years that Christianity has been around, nobody questioned it. Everybody has always looked at it like, well, this is what they did, and never equated Jesus 
giving himself as anything other than, well, you know, he only had, yeah, he's supposed to, right, thank you. <clears throat> Instead of, this is, this is the only, this is the only thing that brings glory to God in the carrying out of being a high priest. Not the qualifications, not the uh, um, lack of without spot or blemish, not carrying out everything in every detail which they did, which was their righteousness, which is the same with the prodigal son. Say, well, clearly I'm a high priest because I carry out everything exactly as it's supposed to be, but there's no death. There's no death. And as long as there's no death, it's, he may be a son, the elder son may be a son, but he's not bringing glory to the Father. Does that make sense? Yes. And uh, this can be seen as so, I can just, I mean, I, I, I live in this pool right here. I see in the scriptures over and over and over and over and over the thing that's always missing, the thing that's always missing. In fact, I'm on a, uh, I'm on finishing up or trying to finish up a search I started years ago that was it's mostly done, but just get just rereading my notes and the Holy Spirit just saying, "See, there it is. It's always there, and it's it's proven. It's proven. It's proven." Um, this this lack of death, the elder son, no, the younger son, this my son was dead. And now there's life. This son never died. And now there's just, Father, I did it all in order. I've been a perfect priest. Does this make sense? Okay, good. You know, and the father's, you know, the father loves the, the elder just like he does. He loves the, all high priests that came along, but he's wanting his son, not us doing everything right or, you know, qualifying. Well, I qualify and you don't. Anybody ever said that in your mind about something? <laughs> you know, I qualify, but you don't, you know. And God goes, well, you don't. You don't qualify fully because the full qualification is you have to be dead. And just by saying that proves you're not. I don't make these things up. I don't know why people get upset with me. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, gosh, this second sentence only read half of it, so let's try to draw a little more. Uh, Though the duties necessitated being carried out in, a, in perfect order, if he had not also given himself as a sacrifice, then all that he did would have been only a shadow of God's reality. Jesus or anyone else. It's only, and that's why the, the high priest and the priesthood was only a shadow. Um, a shadow of the cross, a shadow of Christ crucified, a shadow without the substance. Um, as such it would have fallen into the same category as all the other priests before him they were a shadow of good things to come in other words the priest duties up to the point of sacrifice up to the point of sacrifice were like the unburned incense that had the suitable properties but failed to become a sweet savor to God and therefore the priest's work was useless except as a shadow. Well, at least I'm foreshadowing Christ. You know, God's not looking for foreshadow. He's looking for his son. All right, so <clears throat> uh, what was that last thing you held up? Five, Five okay. <laughs> but now we're down to three. Thank you very much. I, I don't know why. I feel like you're trying to control my life. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Turn back the hands of time. Joshua prayed and it stood still. Lord, just never mind. 
Remember, under the law, the high priest was not required to be the sacrifice under the law. See, and this, this proves a lot of times we're under the law because we resist being the sacrifice, which means that we're under the law. And we say, under the law, I don't have to do this. Jesus did it for me. Isn't that the words we use? I don't have to do this. Jesus did it for me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> without the element of the cross, then, the emphasis of the duties carried out were primarily related to doing everything in, a, in an exact manner. This was the Old Testament priest's righteousness. This was. This was their righteousness. I did it with perfectly. I, you know, I walked into the Holy of Holies and I, sh I sh shook the, the, what's it called? S censor. Yeah. And uh, God didn't censor me. And I shook the censer and it filled with smoke and, and I had little tinkly bells and, you know, and so God didn't kill me and I came out to the people and I said, we're forgiven for one more year. Which means we're righteous. And that was their righteousness because under the law, that was their righteousness. But by the works of the law is no man justified. You, that can be your righteousness, but before God, you're not justified, you see. There's, there's so many realities. This is just the simple thing of being justified, you know, by works and all of that, which is what we are talking about. Has it at its heart Christ crucified, not just that he died for us so we wouldn't have to die. So we miss, we go back to the law in our in our apprehension our, of our grasp of, of what that means because we still have the element of wanting to save. And if you seek to save yourself, you'll lose. But if you lose for his sake, that's someone else, that's outside of yourself, you gain. Meaning there's a, there's, there's a resurrection out of the loss. But it's a resurrection unto new life, isn't it? And what's the new life? Okay. So all those things are important. And all of this is important. All of it is so uh, woven into the fabric of, of all of these things that we find the Lord, that we find his nature, that we have that formed in us, that it not be about us, that it not be, well, there, the reason why there's a God is it's about me. We, that has to disappear. And it has to be about God and others. First two commandments. First two commandments. In light of that, consider the situation of the elder son. Well, here it is, as described. I have had no time to really read over any of this. You could not believe. I'm so thankful for Jason and the people that, that's been working in our house. But right now, everything is... You know, we have our bedroom and we have the kitchen, but not the dining room because it's full of all the living room furniture. And because of the way that things are being done right now, which is a good way, but it's, we can't go anywhere else in the house. And so it's like, oh God, you know, I need to get upstairs to my, I have to do this and I need that and I forget it. You know, a jump drive, just a jump drive, Lord. <laughs> Just a little, you know, any, you know, stuff like that. So I'm just thankful for the Holy Spirit that he loves feeding us Jesus, you know. And I believe that he is doing that. And I believe that's his heart. Um, I, I, did we run out? Did you show me a one already? We're on two. Peace to you. Peace be unto you, you taskmaster. <laughs> um Elder son, where am I? Okay. This was the Old Testament priest's righteousness. In light of that, consider the situation of the elder son as described in the story of the prodigal son. Do you remember his stance against the father? It was against the father. You see, it wasn't, it was against the father. You can say it was against the prodigal son, but you listen to his attitude when he's talking to his father. Okay, 
And see, a lot of times we, we say these things, but we don't realize we're in the presence of the Father and in the plan of the Father. And we just, we just, we just let whatever, I mean, because... Because we're we live here because this is our life and because you know what what happened over there and this you know affects me and therefore I'm not happy. You know your happiness can't be based on somebody else, blessed or unblessed. It has to be the Father, and by Christ in you and in me. Okay, I need to quit talking. Um, he presented himself as more worthy because he did everything perfectly, just like every high priest before Jesus. Then what was lacking? The father said of the prodigal, this, my son, was dead. The elder son was good, but never went through death. This spirit and attitude can bleed over into modern-day Christianity also. It is disconcerting for those who find value only in the job being done correctly, and tend toward choosing those who carry it out only on the basis of ability and perceived correctness. Well, what do y'all think of that? <laughs> you know, because that we're finding our righteousness in that. Lord, it's not about our correctness. It's not about, um, it's not about being under the law and therefore carrying out everything perfectly. You forgive sinners. You forgive the worst, not the best. <laughs> the best don't need a physician, so you don't provide one for them, even though maybe they're in truth the worst. You... Uh, you are not about correctness of everything. You are about a heart issue of us finding your son, finding him as a, a slaughtered lamb, finding him as our life, finding him as um, opportunities. We, we find him as the opportunity so that you, Father, may get the sweet incense of that lamb off of that altar, whether it be the brazen altar or the altar of incense. May our place be as a lamb or as incense, and our true place belongs on an altar all the time, not events, not every so often so that we feel good about ourselves. But as a perpetual sacrifice by Christ Jesus, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're dismissed.